This video is intended solely for educational purposes and aims to inform viewers about some cybersecurity concepts. The content is not intended to promote or endorse hacking or any illegal activities. Unauthorized access to computer systems is against the law and can have serious consequences. We encourage all viewers to act responsibly, respect privacy, and adhere to legal guidelines. Always use your knowledge to enhance security and protect systems. Hello tech people! In this video, we will see how to use an STM32 blue pill as a keyboard, which in turn allows us to automate any keystrokes. This can be used to make automation projects or even a very simple bad USB. A bad USB is a device that emulates a keyboard or a mouse and executes malicious commands without the user's knowledge. This can be anything ranging from running small command prompt commands to downloading a malware using a web browser. Again, this video is for educational purposes only and should be recreated only on your personal devices. All you need is a blue pill. This little beast is a 32-bit microcontroller that's super powerful and incredibly versatile. With a variety of onboard peripherals and the part that is essential for this video, a programmable native USB port. Let's get started. Open the Cube IDE, create a new project, type in the part number for the blue pill. Select the target, click on Next. Give your project a name and click on Finish. Now to configure the project, under System Core, RCC, select High Speed Clock, HSE as Crystal Slash Ceramic Resonator. Click on Sys, set Debug as Serial Wire. Click on Connectivity, USB. Check the box of Device FS to enable the USB feature. Do not edit any other parameter in configuration. Go to Middleware, USB Device. Here, there is a list of USB device types that the blue pill can emulate. It can be anything like an audio device or even a mass storage device. But what we need today is the HID device. Select that. And over here, you can specify the names and descriptions for the USB device. You can even change the vendor IDs and product IDs if you have them. I'm leaving them as it is. I'm also thinking that a button would be useful in this project, so enable any one GPIO pin as input. I'm selecting the PA9 pin. Now we have to set the clock configuration. Click on the second tab named Clock Configuration, then click on the Resolve Clock Issues button. The software itself solves and sets the frequency of all the peripherals. So all basic setup is complete now, click on Save. The pop-up will ask you to generate code, click on Yes, and wait for the process to complete. The USB library would be automatically included in the project. But by default, it is in mouse mode. We need to make small modifications to put it into keyboard mode. You can watch the full video to see the changes or download the project from the link in the description. On the left side, you will find Project Explorer. Go to Middlewares, ST, STM32 USB Device Library, Class, HID, SRC. You will find the USBDHID.C file. Open the file and find the array of USB HID device FS configuration descriptor in that you will find one parameter that is N interface protocol. Default value of the parameter is 02, which is for mouse. You have to replace it with 01 for keyboard. Now in the same file, find the array HID mouse report desk. This array contains property of mouse device Therefore, we have to change its value with the keyboard report descriptor. I have provided that in the link in the description. As we have changed the content of the array, we have to update the size of array too. To do that, open the file usbdh file located at this path. Find the mouse report desk size variable and change it to 63. 
Save all the files, we will write our own project code now. So open the main.c file, include the header usbdhid.h. Then, we need to send keystrokes in a specific sequence, so we create a struct for that. The first value has to be modifier like shift or control. The second value is reserved, and then we can send our keys. Then I have written a helper function to send keys easily by just passing the string values. Then in the main function, let's try sending a series of keys using that function. Let me type that out here. First, we check if the button connected to pin 9 is pressed. Then if it is pressed, we type a whole sentence. I'm uploading using an ST link, so simply click on Run. If you don't have an ST link, watch my previous video to know more ways to upload to the blue pill. Once uploaded, Remove the ST-Link and connect the button. Then connect the board to a computer. The device should be detected as a keyboard. There you go. Open Notepad and press our little button. Amazing! So, we can send any keystrokes we want now. Now, this can easily be used to do a lot of things on a Windows computer if you know the right shortcuts and commands. For instance, by using the Run dialog, you can basically start any system service you want. And you can open the Run dialog by pressing the Windows key and the R key together. Then type in CMD to open a command window. Let's see if we can code this in our project. Back to our project here. I have written another small function to press and release a single key with a modifier key. This will make using shortcuts a lot easier. Let's see how to use that in the main function. We need to press the win key and R together. So use our function, put in the key codes for the win key and R keys. Then we type command. and use the code for the enter key without any modifier keys. Quickly upload and run it. Now press the button. Voila. Let me slow it down a little bit and show you. Now you can use this command window to run useful commands. The run dialog can also be used to open websites or web links directly. Just replace the CMD part of the code with a link. Amazing. What makes the blue pill different from the boards of its category is that when programmed as a HID device or simply keyboard, it will show up only as a keyboard and nothing else. For instance, take the Arduino Leonardo. It can be programmed to be a keyboard, but it will also be listed in COM ports as an Arduino device, unless you flash a custom firmware. So it's traceable, but this TM32 is completely untraceable. Comment if you have any questions or use this in your automation projects. And as usual, a like and subscribe would be amazing.